Okay, this is a diagram showing that when, when the patient lays down on their back, their jaw drops down. This is the airway where the air comes into the lungs and when they lay back, when they lay down, their jaw drops. And this, when they have a sleep appliance, the sleep appliance fits between their teeth and then when they lay down, the, uh, the jaw prevents the jaw from dropping. Without breathing oxygen at night, you definitely uh, lose sleep, lose uh, repair that good reparative sleep. Now we are look, we're monitoring over 30 channels. Essentially what that means is we're looking at everything from again brain waves. What stage of sleep are you in? Why are we doing that? Because we want to know what stage of sleep you're in. Are you in stage one, two, three, or REM, REM sleep? It's important to note that because in certain stages of sleep apnea may occur more, you know, uh, severe for example, REM typically, when your muscle is at its most relaxed state in sleep, um, you'll be the most severe in REM, REM sleep, versus stage one, two, or three. What's going to be the most severe in REM? Your sleep apnea, obstruct sleep apnea, if it's going to occur, because you have, you basically, in REM, you're in muscle paralysis. So imagine the airway, the neck, the fat, everything at its relaxed point. Now it's, it's more likely to collapse. So if you are positive for apnea, there's a good chance that's going to be even more severe in REM sleep. When we go into REM, that's when our body is so relaxed, it's like dead weight. That dead weight falling against the airway creates the greater uh, episode. Of yes, you're, you're, you're more prone to, you know, to having apnea events coming through in REM if you are already positive for having sleep apnea. So, so this is a ridiculous thing. REM is where you want to go. REM is where the problem is, if you have it. Absolutely, and, and that's why it's important to really treat that and treat it ASAP because in REM, many things occur in the body, okay? Uh, chemicals come into play, they break down sugars, things of that sort. Now, what happens when you have sleep apnea? Well, it leads to disruptive sleep. Disruptive sleep, disruptive REM. And now you're losing the quality, and you're maybe losing the quantity. But I didn't have bedwetting. I had just some behavioral problems. I had um, lack of sleep, um, restless sleep. I never reached REM sleep. I never dreamt as a kid. I sat, I would see, I would sit straight up in my sleep and yell things in my sleep and go right back to sleep. I'm interested in getting the sleep issues solved. The ones I just mentioned to you. But then there are other symptoms like allergies and infections and bedwetting and uh, um, you know, attention deficit and concentration and anger management. A lot of those things will correct as the sleep improves. They need REM sleep to clear out the toxins from the brain and REM sleep, lack of REM sleep, and the children need uh, a young child might have four hours of REM sleep at night, a young baby or an infant. Um, but you have to maintain almost two and a half hours of that REM sleep for the rest of your life. But the, the delta sleep, the deep sleep, that, that you have tantra while you have um, nightmares in, that's a sign that they have delta sleep mostly. Delta sleep is essential for giving off growth hormones. This is why sometimes these children might be shorter than the ones that have good sleep, REM sleep. REM sleep, you dream. REM sleep is the repair of these items that, that have exhausted themselves during the day. And it cleans out the toxins between the brain. The chemicals that are found in their intercellular um, um, fluid that flows between the cells of the brain Beta amyloid is the same chemical that they find in Alzheimer's and dementia patients as adults. So they feel there is some connection between some of these things. So there are a thousand researchers being done. They, they're coming from all directions. I can't keep up with it all. But there are so many research things. By the way, REM sleep was invented in 1953. You can believe that. There was an article. And in 1966, there was an interesting article 
where a psychiatrist took kids with ADHD and kids that did not have, and the ones that did not have had REM sleep, and the ones that have ADHD did not have REM sleep. So, you know, some of these research things have been very important over the years, and they've told us that the child must have REM sleep. Thank you.